Well, hello again, and welcome to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures Podcast. I'm Tom. As always, I'm with my gorgeous, wonderful, intelligent, <laughs> extremely hardworking... <laughs> Florida trip love and wife and co-host Michelle. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Hi, everybody. So good to have you with us. We are actually recording this episode on Saturday, May 14th, what? 2022. It will be dropping as normal on Sunday, Sunday, May 15th, 2022. So why are we recording on Saturday, sweetheart? Well, that's because we actually were able to, just at the last minute today, secure some park reservations for Disneyland. And since we only have a little bit more time to use our magic pass because magic key because it's going to have block off periods pretty soon we wanted to take advantage of that that and we may not be living near Disneyland <laughs> well, that, that much longer as well <laughs> so since there was a date available and we had a little bit of time we decided we're going to take advantage of that tomorrow and mm -hmm. zip up there I think it's going to be a little warm but we'll yes. make do it'll be good just to be back at the happiest place on earth that's right looking forward to it yes and today we'll be talking about our Florida visit which soon will not be a Florida visit it will be a Florida home <laughs> that's true <laughs> <laughs> although trips to Disney World will be kind of trips because it's that's true. It's not we're not going to be right there normally. That's though. true. We as we've mentioned in our past episodes, yep. we will be a little over an hour away. Not much different than what we are to Disneyland mm -hmm. right now. So it will be a visit whenever we make it to the right. Walt Disney World Keep Resort. Keep it special. And yes. Thank you for joining us today. As you notice, we are back with another live episode for it. Well, yeah. not live, live recorded <laughs> a, a new episode for you uh, because you know, obviously last week things were a little crazy we had so much stuff going on we couldn't bring you a brand new episode but this technical week technical difficulties we had that as well <laughs> But mostly it was just us trying to get everything together through the week. We had so much going on, and we'll talk a lot about that today. Again, thank you for joining us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there... We'd really love it if you haven't already done so. As I always say, sign up for our newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter. I promise there will be a brand new newsletter coming out this week after a few weeks of laying off of it Ooh. because we've been very busy. <laughs> uh, but this week there will be a new uh, newsletter coming out and it's just another way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures podcast world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that is I right. I psyched you out, didn't I? You did. You do that often, <laughs> but I love it. I love it so much. We also love hearing from you because this is a very interactive show, and there are great ways for you to connect with us, including on social media. We're on Twitter, at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. If you are on Facebook, come on over and join us for some good, positive Disney energy fun at our Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. Yeah, it's really a great bunch of people. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to say group because we already said group a million times. It's a great bunch of people and um, they they share some of their fun, positive energy and things that are going on in their lives. And it's really enjoyable to be able to celebrate with everybody. Yeah, whether you're there just kind of watching what goes on, what gets posted, whether you're there posting regularly, we just enjoy you being along in that group and having that good, positive Disney energy fun. That's right. Yeah. Uh, also, we are on YouTube. If you want to find us there, just do a quick search for Hyperion Adventures Podcast. Hit subscribe. You'll know whenever we have a new video. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. And if you ever have any topics that you'd like us to cover or do some deep dives with or just want to give some feedback we love hearing from you yes uh, we love hearing you for any reason even if you just want to say hi uh, we appreciate it in uh, various ways uh, through the various different formats that you can do that so uh, by the way if you would like to support this show help support this show in a monetary way and get some cool gear out of it as well. Well, there are a couple of ways to do that. First is the most straightforward one. And that's just to go to our Spreadshirt shop where you can find all sorts of gear there that have our various different logos. Uh, and it's not just t-shirts, even though it is Spreadshirt shop. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of stuff like there are caps, there are mugs, there are water bottles, all sorts of different things that you can get in all sorts of different sizes, colors, and and like I said, logos. That's right. I was just going to say, there's multiple logos to choose from. So. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to find us there, just go to Spreadshirt.com and just do a search for Hyperion Adventures Podcast. We'll come up there. Or if you go to any of our social media accounts on our profile page, we have a link tree uh, 
link there uh, <laughs> and you can find another link uh, straight to our spread shirt shop another great way to be involved is to become a patreon yeah. member of this show we have tiers starting as low as two dollars you get swag that way as well if you're involved with that and we're planning once we get some things settled to bring a bunch of you on and have uh, a great little Patreon show where you are really, really involved in the episode. Right. And our Patreons also get from time to time very exclusive information that we've run across that can help make their Disney lives even better. Yeah. And if you want to find us there, just go to patreon.com slash Hyperion Adventures podcast. And again, to you starting as low as $2 per month. So it's not very much. Like I said, you get swag out of it. You get a mm-hmm. shout out on the show. And depending on what tier you're in, we give you more and more stuff depending on how high you want to help us out. And we appreciate everybody through the Spreadshirt shop, through the Patreon page that has helped cut our costs of this show every month so far. Yeah, it's, it really is important to us and we really do appreciate it. It's so much. Can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Now, before we get into this week's show, we always like to kind of take a look back at the week that was, or the couple weeks that was, since <laughs> it's been a little bit. Actually, we did do a, my favorite thing sort of last week, um, in and around our best of show last week, which we hope you enjoyed, even though it was a show that we've done in the past. Right. Um, but we always like to find those little nuggets of positivity, of good, fun energy that has happened during the week. And that is what we call our my favorite thing from the this week. And when we do these, well, we always start with Michelle. One, because she's awesome, wonderful, (laughs) all things good in the world. Of course, she does the best research. You know she has the best lists. She definitely has the best tips. But she almost always has the best my favorite thing from this week. So, Michelle, what was your favorite thing from this week? Well, I guess there's a lot of things that happened that were really good. Um, But I'm just going to narrow it down to one. And it really had to do with my my work. And uh, we had our senior leadership review during the week. They did a walkthrough of our clinic and uh, it really went very, very well. Uh, Leadership was super pleased with how things turned out. So it made me really proud of the people that I work with, my team, the leaders in my building that work with me. Uh, So it's, it was fun to have something positive like that turn out. Yeah, very nice. Very Thank good. You. That's Thank great. You. That's great. So. What about you? My favorite thing from this week was very simple. It was after being away for a couple of weeks. And even though I'd seen Michelle for a long period of time during the week, it was still always good to come back to San Diego, mm-hmm. to her, most importantly. It doesn't right. matter where our home is, whether it's San Diego, where our wow. new home will be in Florida. It's just always coming back to my sweetheart and, wow. and getting Thank a hug you. and a kiss from her. And that is always my favorite thing of every single week. Wow. Thank you, sweetie. Yes, it, it was... Uh, you know, we, like you said, we've been together through some of this recent traveling and everything. Um, uh, but there were so many other things going on and we had Scott. And so it was hard to really just have alone time together where we could normally just be with each other and enjoy each other's company. So yes, I was, agree. It's also good to get back in our bed because yes. I've been in like <laughs> so many different hotel rooms <laughs> and various different beds for the last two weeks right. before I got home. It was really nice to get back into our own bed, which is very comfortable Agreed. and I like. So that was really nice as well. Now on to this week's show. We have lots of stuff for you this week, including there are fantastic ways to celebrate with a little bit of soul coming to the Disneyland Resort. Mm-hmm. We'll tell you about that. Speaking of the happiest place on earth uh, there's a disney california adventure park landmark that is getting set to return we'll tell you what that is if you have a trip to olani planned for this summer well we have some good news about a guest favorite location that is returning and you still have a chance to experience star wars celebration 2022 even if you can't make it out to anaheim here on the west coast here in a couple weeks and we'll tell you how you can accomplish that but enough about all that let's go ahead and and get to our main topic of the week. So yes, as we've talked about, and you've probably seen on social media and uh, various different avenues over the last couple of weeks, we have been traveling out to Florida for a lot of different reasons, doing a lot of different things. And we thought this would be a good time to kind of go over and tell you about all the stuff that we did over the last few weeks. Yeah. I mean, I think 
Hmm. I was focusing on Disney World, but I guess we're going to expand, so that could be fun too. <laughs> we're just talking. I mean, we're just talking. We just talking. <laughs> We just, uh, you know, we're just sharing. We're just having a good time. I do know that your trip started with an unusual and, or I should say, unexpected twist from what our plans had been for yes. all along. Yes. I don't know if you want to talk oh, about yeah. some of that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll just talk about this. And we'll, you know, of course, it, the trip started, as you may have, if you followed along on social media, you know, Scott and I were traveling, bre- driving across country again. <laughs> right. We know the route very well now. <laughs> um, but yeah, the plan plan originally was to take our older car that we have. Mm-hmm. It's a 2009 Chevy Impala that has 150 <laughs> plus thousand miles on it. And, um, you know, we, we weren't, we, it, it took us to this point to decide on whether that car was going to make the trip right. with us or not. We, we, we were off on it, on, on it, on, on it. We were, we were hedging on both sides of it, trying to decide on which way to go with it. And it came to the point where we're like, you know what? We're going to go ahead and bring it out. We have one more drive to make, or at least one more drive to make. So let's go ahead and drive it out there. We'll drive it with, load it up with some stuff that we right. can take out there. And, and of course, Scott, who was going back to be with his father, right. um, his birth father lives out there in Florida. So we thought, okay, let's do that. And so, the, you know, since this car has so many miles on it, you know, the days before I was doing all this stuff to get it ready. Yeah. I was making sure the tires were rotated and changing the <laughs> fluid, getting the oil changed, checking the fluids and everything. I went in, got a bunch of the fluids changed, Drove out of there, and this was like the day before we were supposed to leave. Right. And after I'd gotten the, this work done, the transmission was kind of slipping on me. Wow. And I got concerned. <laughs> I'm like, what happens if the transmission goes out on me and we're in the middle of New Mexico right, or something, right. you know? So um, I called the people that had it done, and there was just no way I could get it back in there and get them to work on it and everything before we left on this trip. So I scrambled at the last moment, found a rental car that was a reasonable, <laughs> what's a reasonable price now, but yeah. was a reasonable price. And um, we ended up going with that at the very last minute. Yeah, that was a real unexpected twist. I mean, we're, I remember at the time when you first called me to say this was happening and you're concerned, then it was like, okay, do we totally abandon the drive and do we try to find flights that you and Scott could go? Do we go, you know, because I was planning to go at the end of the week to meet you later on. Do we go together at that point? Do you still go ahead earlier because there were some other things that we needed to get done and it was just a lot of like you said last minute like oh my gosh what should we do here and how do we approach this right and so you know as i looked at it, i did look at flights that day and you know the prices are crazy for flights right now and everything involved and and you know to be honest with you scott you know he he will fly mm-hmm. um but he's a little bit of a nervous flyer and we've decided long ago that we're not going to do any more red eyes with him right. and you know if we can avoid you know, connecting flights to make it even more so he has that much more nerves in between right. and everything. And for the prices that were out there and everything involved and the timing of it was either going to be super early or we're going to get there super late, it just didn't work out. And I just like at the end, I'm like, well, I found the rental car that was at a reasonable price. Again, <laughs> reasonable for now. Uh, when I found that what was a reasonable price, I'm like, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and drive. We can still get stuff out there and everything. I had to change some of the, because I had had hotel hotels booked along the route. Mm -hmm. I had to change those out, change the amount of time I was going to be traveling on certain days because of picking the rental car and everything out, but figured it all out, got it all laid out and it all worked out. We had a very nice drive uh, across country. One of our best. We've done this many times. I think this was like the sixth time (laughs) I've driven cross country in the last couple of years. And uh, it, it was a very nice drive with him. We had a great time listening to podcasts, of course, listening to Hamilton, Mm -hmm. various different music. And uh, it was just very enjoyable. Great hotels, even in like some cities you've probably never heard of or will never visit in your life, like Lordsburg, New Mexico, you know I mean? But it all worked out really, really well. Yeah, nice. And um, for the most part, I think there was only one day where you hit some traffic, some unexpected traffic, but I think for the most part, it sounded like you were uh, kind of really just cruising along without any any hiccups. Yeah, weather was great for those days that we were going. There was not any real rain, a little bit here and there, but nothing really storming or anything. Like you said, no significant traffic. It all worked out really well and we got to hit up like 
three of our favorite travel stops <laughs> in the world that we've discovered over the last several um, trips cross country. That is the it is the highlight of every cross country trip. And if you've ever been to a Bucky's travel stop, you know what I'm talking about. It is the Disney parks of travel stops, right. of, of truck stops, essentially. I mean, there aren't a lot. I mean, there's a couple in Florida up on the East Coast coast um kind of a northern east coast kind of around uh st augustine and daytona beach i think there's some there's one in alabama they're mostly in texas though and um you run into them and it's like when you've driven cross country and you go to some of these truck stops they are very hit and miss right but man you go into a bucky's and it is like oh (laughs) it is clean it has anything you could want there they're they're smoking brisket and breaking it out and chopping it up in the middle of the rest of the rest stop the travel stop and wrapping up sandwiches and it is just glorious and (laughs) i love me some buckies well i know that unfortunately i haven't tried it out i'm looking forward to it but i'm not necessarily looking forward to a cross-country drive but um yeah when you describe it well first of all it, it sounds like you and scott had a great time really getting some like you said good solid food that was really enjoyable and and fresh. Um, I know you mentioned that even people are there in with shopping carts inside that it's really huge. And, you know, it's such a multi-purpose, like you said, truck stop. There are people taking showers and things so that, you know, truckers who are, who are also going cross country. And it does sound like a, a wonderful place that, that you can rely on to be clean and have some good grub. It's it's glorious. It really is. <laughs> it is the best thing on these travel on these uh, on these trips cross country. Um, I I originally had it all planned around where I was going to stop at like every single one that was on the route. <laughs> we had to pass one up because they were just too close together at one point. Um, but you know, we picked up sandwiches for lunches. We picked up sandwiches that we could heat back up because we had microwaves in the mm-hmm. hotel rooms for dinners picked up like cookies and there's so many more things there i i mean it sounds like this is an advertisement for bucky's right. they haven't paid us a cent i'm just if they want to advertise <laughs> on it great i'm all for it because i will sell you hardcore because we love us some bucky's and i can't wait for michelle to experience right. it at some point here i was trying to convince her as we were on the, i'm like you know St. Augustine is only about an hour away. (laughs) We could take you up to Bucky's, you know, and you could check one out up there. But no, it's great. I love it. And um, I have another trip coming up here probably pretty soon. (laughs) I plan to hit up all the Bucky's again there. But anyway, it was a great road trip. uh, Worked out well. And, um, you know, even that, you know, a lot of times we've done these road trips and I've left Scott off with his father immediately Mm -hmm. when we get into Florida. No, uh, Scott stayed with us for almost this entire trip. Right. Yeah. Um, the, the exchange day, um, because of his dad's health issues right now had to be a little later on in the trip. So, um, it, but it was kind of really fun. We were we did Disney World. We stayed at one of the resorts, our, our DVC. I know you made some magic by finding like a, a, in a second something that was available and and jumped on it in terms of a a one bedroom suite or one bedroom villa, and uh, it was something that Scott really enjoyed too. So I think it was fun having that ability um, to have that time with him as well. Yeah, it, it all worked out really well. So we left on the Tuesday, that I think it was the 25th, mm-hmm. and arrived in Florida, Scott and I did, on uh, the Friday, Friday, the 29th, mm-hmm. that evening. Uh, Michelle flew in, she red-eyed in mm-hmm. that night, flew, leaving on the 29th, and she arrived in Orlando on the 30th. Scott and I went out there, uh, exchanged cars for a, <laughs> a little bit cheaper car, but actually a bigger car, but it was nice because it, 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 it a lot of room for right. everything that we needed to do. Um, and got her and then went back and, uh, you know, just kind of um, relaxed for a few days mm-hmm. out at uh, your sister and brother-in-law's right. place right out there on the coast at Indian Atlantic. Yeah, yeah. So it was nice. Uh, we had nice weather, you know, and uh, it's always so pleasant to stay there because it's like you said right on the water it's just very calm to you know watch the waves coming in and everything and it's just really spectacular and Mm -hmm. beautiful yeah Yeah. just had a good time there and just just 
enjoyed the the rest of the Saturday and Mm -hmm. the Sunday there. And then on Monday, uh, we had the walkthrough to our brand new Mm -hmm. home, Mm kind of going over the details of it and making sure everything was good to go because we were closing later that week. Right, right. Yep. We found something quickly, nabbed on it, and... Yep, exactly. So uh, that went well. And then right from there, we went straight off to the Walt Disney World Resort, um, getting set to head into our, yes, that one bedroom villa that we were lucky enough that it it popped open. It was, it was, um, it was a little bit of pixie dust uh, because it's been hard to find those. It was a standard view, which we've never done for a one bedroom villa before. Right. I was really actually kind of concerned about that, thinking, am I just going to be looking at parking lot and what? What a wonderful surprise that it wasn't that. It actually worked out really, really well oh, for amazing. us for this trip. So um, the, the standard views for the one-bedroom villas, and I believe for the deluxe studios as well, mm-hmm. uh, are all down on the first and second floor. Right. We had the first floor, so that meant we could walk right up to our patio and in through if we want, if we were... Daring enough to leave our door unlocked, <laughs> yeah. um, we could walk right in from the outside. We didn't have to go inside and around and open it up. We could just kind of, so it allowed right. us to go out and get to the pool or go pick up food or go to the shops or go and yeah, I know you guys did the uh, marshmallow toasting a couple times right. out there. Yeah, so we could just step outside, like you said, outside the patio. It was just a, you know, a few feet away where they had the, uh, the fire pit going and Scott and I did that several nights and, you know, it it was again it was just fun to have time as a family together where it wasn't like we were coming home from work and tired and ugh, it was it was just relaxing we didn't push to do everything we decided we were going to you know take it a little slower and just enjoy each other's company and enjoy yeah. the room and the location but yeah it was you know the grounds obviously disney does an amazing job at, at keeping the you know the landscaping really really beautiful and lush and everything and it just was fun scott enjoyed sitting out on the balcony as well i got a couple cute pictures maybe we can post it sometime mm-hmm. too that um you know he just really enjoyed that and you know, it's fun to be in a balcony higher up and looking out. Um, but this was also enjoyable and it was convenient. Like you said, we were able to go over to the contemporary multiple times to, you know, whether it was just to grab a little something or go to some of the shops and uh, enjoy some fun Disney souvenirs to bring back or whatever. Mm-hmm. So um, and, and they also have their the DVC uh, little you know, grocery mart there as well. And that was super convenient. Yeah. Cause we had to pick up, a, we, I mean, we brought some, we, we went by the store and grabbed a bunch of stuff, but mm-hmm. we also needed a few things as we were out there and they always are. You need Mickey bars. Yes. Well, <laughs> of course. Uh, but they always have a few things that are, that are good that you right. can bring back and, and help you out and, and uh, you know, make meals right there when you have the kitchen or the right. kitchenettes within these uh, DVC rooms. But so, yeah, I mean, it was really convenient to be there and we, I, uh, we had a, you know, a fairly good view. We could see the lake mm-hmm. and we could see the pools and uh, it was good. But where it really came in handy was on our second day there, which we had booked a poolside mm-hmm. cabana at the Contemporary Resort. Yeah, that was amazing. And it was lucky that we did do that. Um, if you've ever rented cabanas in the past, uh, I guess a couple years ago, just a couple years ago, Disney um, switched the policy to where you have to be staying at that resort in order to book. So you can't be staying even at a different Disney property and, and book at one of the other pool cabanas you have to be on the property so it was really lucky that we had that um i think i, I we might have already mentioned this on a previous episode that as we were trying to secure it somebody else got the cabana we were going to get so we they there wasn't one more left that was a different one and, and we got it and actually we were really happy because that was spectacular the one that we we did have yeah it was great it wasn't cheap Mm-hmm. We splurged on this yes. a significant amount. This was kind of a celebration thing, but we figured since we weren't doing as much in the parks and everything right. and Mother's for Day this trip, or... Mother's Day, Michelle's birthday is coming up. We kind of combined it all mm-hmm. into one big splurge and uh, just went out there and really enjoyed uh, ourselves 
uh, pool side. Um, and it was great, you know. I mean, we were a bit concerned because the weather report originally had it starting to rain at around <laughs> 1 p.m. and going yes. through the evening. We're thinking, great, you know, we booked this and it may rain on us for, and we may end up having to call our day short. Then the, it gradually moved to, well, it's not going to start raining until 4 or 5. And then eventually it never rained. Right. I don't believe it. Ne- it <laughs> yeah. was perfect. It actually got sunnier as the day went on. And it was it was fantastic. It worked out so well for our cabana. Right. You know, so there was a couple fun things uh, uh, about the whole experience. But I think one of the things in, in my head, I thought, OK, is this going to spoil us that we'll never want to do poolside you know, just enjoy the pools without a cabana. And, you know, thankfully that wasn't the case. But so first of all, I want to mention too, is that uh, at the Contemporary, they have some of the cabanas by their quiet pool. Mm -hmm. And then they have some that is by their main pool. So, you know, if you're renting one of the cabanas and you have kids and you want them to be able to be around other kids, that the main pool cabanas would be your you're probably your preference uh for us you know it was just us and scott and we thought it would be best just to stay by the quiet pool it's also close to the lake or right on you know you're overlooking the lake as well so um you know it seemed a little bit more kind of with our whole relaxation theme yeah, it worked out really well. Actually, it was fairly empty out there for much of the day. And yeah. the afternoon is kind of it heated up and, you know, the park people had had their day in the parks and were coming back. Then the pool started right. to fill up around us. But uh, we had a great time out there. You know, we, the cabana comes with a selection of soft drinks and water and you get a fruit plate with it and mm-hmm. like a basket of snacks, which are mostly just bags of chips right. of different types, pretzels. I think it was Lay's potato chips and Doritos, which... Scott was in heaven because he loves Doritos. <laughs> so he like would chow down on two bags I pretty know. quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so didn't even take that day. Yeah. <laughs> but it was great. You know, we, we had a, a server that would come by regularly. Oh, we Quite we, often. Yeah. We got uh, cock- ordered cocktails a few times and then uh, she brought us lunch when we ordered off the menu right. for lunch there. And we got... Um, let's see, I got a, a burger, we got Scott a turkey sandwich, mm-hmm. which I think we kind of split. He had half my burger, I had half his turkey right. sandwich, and big old thing of fries. <laughs> like, we, we had some fries to go along with his sandwich, like, you know, what side would you want? Fries. And it was like this whole bin of fries. Yes. Like, we had to pack some up and take it back to the room. Because there were so many french fries, we, like, we just couldn't eat them all. Um, and then you got, what, did you get a salad? I did get their salad. They yeah. had, like, a Caesar salad, so I, I, I got that. That and it was it was good. Um, they have a little refrigerator there, and that's where like the, the they had some waters, sodas there, and uh, we could put the fruit plate because we didn't eat that right away. Um, and so that you have all day with you. And one of the things we did notice is that they provide you enough for the number of people on your reservation, and we had the three of us on our reservation. So we, we had three of everything. So that they provided, uh, as part of the cabana. So like three waters, they had, um, Sprite and Coke. Um, so three of each of those, uh, we did ask them to exchange for diet. Um, so they were able to bring us some diet sodas and then, um, the same thing with the snacks they had, a variety of, I think like there was like four different types of snacks and they gave three bags of each of the snacks. So if, if you're just a a couple, you're going to get a little bit less. If you're, you know, more people, they probably provide you more. Right. Yeah. Depending on, I I forget how many they go up to in those cabanas, but um, what you get there when you you go in is that they have, it's It's a tented area and outside they have two um, padded chaise lounges mm-hmm. out to the front if you want to go out and get some real sun and be right by the pool right. you can sit there if you want to be a little bit more undercover they kind of have this long couch, couch. in there mm-hmm. and then another lounger that is like a wide almost like a bed style right. uh, lounger that can be undercover and that's where Scott spent most of the day I was mm-hmm. in there as much uh, a fair amount too kind of just kicking back you know and then Michelle who gets you know can be in the sun a little bit but <laughs> her fair skin will uh, will burn pretty quickly yeah. We are, we're all actually in the shade a fair amount, right. but it was really comfortable in there. Uh, there's a television with a, a variety of channels. If you want to pop anything on, you know, we put on a couple things that Scott likes to kind right. of keep him entertained when he wasn't. We did go for a couple dips in the mm-hmm. pool yep. and enjoyed that. But uh, it was just a, it was just a really, really great time out there. Was it worth the money? 
it's up to you. I mean, right. I, it's really, really expensive. I think if you can get some groups of people together that all pitch in on it, right. I, I think you get more value out of sure. it. Um, would we do it again? Maybe if we can get groups of people yeah. together that want to get, you know, pitch in on it. Um, but I don't think it's something that we would do very often. But this was a really special thing and we were glad we did it. Right. So, you know, one of the things you just mentioned was how it, you know, it's like tented. And so, uh, but you can, in fact, when you arrive and they have everything set up and they have a nice little welcome sign there for you and everything. So they have it tied back on the four poles around, around it. Um, but you can close as many or all of the the tented area if you wanted to and i think as the sun shifted later in the afternoon we closed two of the sides because that's where the sun was really coming in on us um but you know and so that was kind of nice and really convenient the other thing and, and you noticed it and i didn't notice it there at at least at the quiet pool for the contemporary they do have other you know lounge chairs out there for people who aren't renting a cabana um but none of them had umbrellas the only umbrellas that were out there were by they had some tables with you know chair like that could seat for regular people. seating chairs right yeah. um so if you were going to be at the contemporary quiet pool and needed you know coverage you weren't going to get it without it, the cabana now over at bay lake towers though they do have umbrellas o- over most of the like they'll have like two chairs together with an umbrella and they do have it at the main pool of the contemporary as right, well right. there, there are the quiet there pool. are some uh yeah right. some chases with uh, umbrellas there but the quiet pool no they you, right. you you you're, you're either in the sun or you're sitting at a table uh you know regular table right. with chairs not these lounge right uh, now it was nice too that the, the 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 all the lounges that we had in the cabana were you know thick padded mm-hmm. so it they, was very comfortable. they were really comfortable um plenty of towels you had towels that were different from the ones that were just by the pool um and the, and they started you off with plenty of them um pillows course, and everything right, to pillows, you know yeah. to prop up your legs or prop up your head yeah. or whatever you want they had a nice yeah. little back roll uh-huh. too that you could use so the, you know they really did try to make it nice they had a, a, a mini safe there so if you did want to like you know lock up wallets or something like that you could do that um you know it had a fan mm-hmm. in it as yeah. well overhead you know so it, ceiling fan yeah, yeah so it was really it really was you know luxurious but like you said uh you know it it's not necessarily something that has to be utilize mm-hmm. each time um i think the other thing too is when you rent something like that and you want to make sure you're getting the most out of your money because you're doing their i think they're only renting for full days now they, right. they used they to do have, partial days but i don't think they do that they didn't anymore. even offer a partial day yeah. it was full day 10 a.m to 7 p.m right yeah, that, that spot's yours yeah so you know it makes you feel like oh i really need to stay here and get my full value out of it. Although I think that ended up being costly because then we'd, you know, purchase more drinks, <laughs> you know, but you know, it was nice. That was another unexpected surprise. I think, you know, uh, when you read the descriptions on their website, you know, it sounds that the, uh, grand Floridian pool cabanas that you have somebody coming frequently. It doesn't really say that at the one for contemporary, but she was, she came around, a lot and I didn't see her going necessarily to other areas it's not like she was the person who was by the pools to do drink orders she really was working with people at cabanas yeah and she saw she was out there visiting us regularly right. whether we wanted something or not she would just come by and make sure yeah that, just see and, and check with us and um, like I said you get that you get those sodas the water mm-hmm. the the fruit plate and the the snacks the chips right um, those are included in the price if you want to buy lunch or if you want to um, other beverages right. or whatever you are purchasing those separately. So just know that going in uh, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. is what the time was at, uh, at least at the contemporary resort for this. And you can come and go as you please. You can just get up if you want to go in and, you know, rest inside for a little bit mm-hmm. or want to go eat lunch or even when you want to go to the park for a little bit. Right. I mean, if you're spending all this money, I don't know why you'd want to leave and right, go to the park. Yeah. But if that's what you want to do, uh, that space is yours it, until 7 p.m. Right. No one else can use it. It's not going away from you if, when you decide that you want to leave exactly. it. It is your spot. You paid for it for the whole day. So. Yeah. Now, going back to the fact that we had a room that was a standard view and it was on, um, you know, the first floor, 
and it faced the contemporary side, it was really convenient that if we could use our own hotel room, restroom, it was easier to go. I mean, not, it wasn't the closest uh, going to the, you know, the pools that, I mean, excuse me, the restrooms provided for the pools was a little closer, but it was, it was kind of nice just to say, okay, let's just, if we mm-hmm. want to go to the restroom, go over to our hotel room. And there were a couple of things we needed to get out of the room and, right. and stuff at one point through yeah. there. And so um, that made it really easy to just walk in yeah. through our balcony and, and, and grab it and come back in. And so, yeah, it worked out really, really well for us. So yeah. again, a uh, great time with the Gamana. Don't know if we'll do it again, but we're so glad that we did this time. Yeah. Very happy that we did do it. I think it, especially with what was, you know, we were trying to accomplish so much in that trip and just wanted to have a little bit of time that we're relaxing. It, it was, you know, it was kind of like a very luxurious mm-hmm. time. Yeah. So, so that was the second day. That was Tuesday mm-hmm. on, uh, on Wednesday. Well, it happened to be May the 4th be yeah. with you. And we had some special visitors come by and, and, and st- stop in for a little bit of lunch yeah. and that was Pat and Charles from the Conversations podcast who it was we mentioned this a little bit last week I think during our my favorite things from this week but it was so good seeing them for a couple hours they were on their way to Disney's Hollywood Studios right. for the lightsaber glow that went on out there and to spend some good Star Wars time with some other uh, friends and uh, it was just so nice of them to go out of their way, come by, yeah. and just catch up with them for a couple hours. I know. It was really, really sweet that they took the time to come out and visit with us. And, you know, we always have such a great time visiting with them. They're so genuine and wonderful and hilarious, mm. hilarious. If I, if you ever need to just, like, have those just... I don't know how, how to even describe the kind of laughter that you experience when you're around these guys, but it is it's a workout. It is. It's a workout. It is. And, but you know what? It totally lifts your spirits and you know, you can ha- be having, you know, kind of a ho-hum or a really bad time and, and they will make you feel so good and just bring you so much joy. And, and so really appreciate that they made our Star Wars day really special. Right. And since we had the one bedroom villa, it was a perfect place to entertain and yeah. have them over there. Yeah, you cooked up some nice flatbread. I made a couple flatbreads for us. Mm-hmm. That was our lunch. And so we From had From scratch, and no had, had a little, little, little lunch with them. And that was, it was just, it was just a really, really good time. Um, and good time seeing them. And they headed on their way to the parks because that's what their main goal was. But it was really nice of them to come out and and see us. And um, by that point, I was wiped out. Scott (laughs) was wiped out. But Michelle had some energy. So she (laughs) ran over to Magic Kingdom real quickly to go check a few things out. Right. We did have um, park reservations that day because we we didn't know for sure what was going to be going on in the afternoon or like you said, how much energy we'd have. So we did have park reservations and... uh, uh, decided that yeah let me go go in there and check it out um, and it's just again it's really convenient to walk from Bay Lake Towers over to the Contemporary it's it's quick you don't you know you could take the monorail that is really convenient too but you you know you don't need to and so went in there and spent some of the early evening hours there and did the people mover I did I started with the people mover it was funny because it was saying the wait was going to be longer than when I got over there and it was like zipped right on um and that's always fun it was amazing to see how much progress had been made on Tron and uh I always love you know it was getting darker as the is a right little 10 minute ride I guess it is go yeah, on your way back to back to the hotel right 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 so I did I you know checked out a few other things walked around and um I'm trying to think if I did some other attractions I felt like there was another attraction I did um but I walked around and you know checked out different things and you know it's always fun to look for, for the statues and and you know things like that um, and then it was getting close to time for enchantment I was trying to decide if I really wanted to be in the midst of everything or be closer to the exit because I wasn't sure um, how much my energy was going to to last at that point being the end of the evening so I started very close to the castle and then as as you know we we're getting closer and closer to the start I, I started heading back further and further to where I was by the train station um, and so I did see um, pretty much all of it I did want to get out before the very end before the 
you know, the big the crowds were le- leaving, you know, cause I knew even the walk would kind of get a little crowded too. So I was walking out as the finale was going on, but I could see the fireworks uh, during my walk back to Bay Lake tower and could hear the, the, you know, all the music and the story being told. And what did you think about enchantment? I, liked from, it. I know you only saw it kind of from a distance. You weren't right. in the midst of it, but right. So I, I, I enjoyed it. You know, I I think we're spoiled. Um, one of the things that I, I really noticed, you know, with the light projections on the walls, you know, with, we've seen it on the castle. Yeah, Main Street USA. Yes. We've seen it on the castle, especially like for the, um, you know, Very Merry Christmas Party. It's spectacular. Happily so, Ever After. Right. So, you know, I already knew those were always, you know, big hits and, and wonderful to see. Uh, this time I was paying attention since they were doing it more on Main Street USA buildings and um, like I said I think we're spoiled by Disneyland because a lot of times at Disneyland you can actually it's not quite as crowded typically on Main Street um, so that you can stand kind of in the midst and really be immersed in that and I felt like I've the projections for Enchanted were you know I I understood why they were they were a little bit more um, how do I want to put this they weren't as sharp of images mm. as what we're used to with some you know like with mickey's birthday celebration mickey's mix magic mixed magic and you know even in for halloween time and stuff um it was good i think disneyland has done a better uh job at, at those projections but i also understood it was more kind of uh, enchantment is more the magic and feeling the magic and not necessarily focusing on the the crisp images. Or gotcha. Anything. It may have looked, you weren't close to the castle, so it may have looked better on right. Cinderella Castle as yes, opposed to yes. uh, there on Main Street right. USA, which is more of a new thing that they mm-hmm. have going on there. Yes, they've been doing it at Disneyland for a while, right. but new, new to Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. But yeah, it was lovely. It was lovely. It wasn't my favorite fireworks show. Probably not, but it was lovely. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It seemed like, and I've I've not experienced it yet mm-hmm. myself, so I can't really judge it. Um, from what people say, you know, it's a nice show. Mm-hmm. It just when you compare it to some other shows, right. it's like it's not as good as Happily Ever After. It's not as good as Wishes. It's a good show. Right. If you didn't know that those two shows existed, right. then maybe you might you know think differently about it. But sure. you know, it's just when you compare them, it's like. Eh, it's lax a little bit, but if you don't know those, it's probably wonderful. I mean, right, Disney does exactly. not fail on their nighttime spectaculars. Right. They're all great. And there were some fireworks that, you know, like the shapes that they created were more unique from what I've seen in the past, especially like the ones when they were playing music from Moana mm-hmm. and how they, you know, had some of the shapes that were very defined from that movie it was impressive. That's good. Yeah. Good. I'm looking forward to checking it out for myself some, sometime here in the near future. Right. So so that was that evening. Came back, had dinner, and just kind of relaxed mm-hmm. for the rest of the evening. We did see the uh, electrical water pageant right. come by a couple times by, by our place. And I uh, got to see the the new updated with the kind of, I think it's the same floats, but right. then mostly the same show. But there's a little preamble part right. of it and a little right. post yeah, part of it and with the 50th anniversary yeah and that was kind of cool to mm-hmm. see and I, we like that we always it's 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 cheesy but we love the right. water pageant yes. it's always fun so and again it's fun when you're on that side where you're on the bay lake side where you could actually go out mm-hmm. on your patio and take a look and just at check it, it out mm-hmm. yeah yeah it was good i don't think we, we from our angle we couldn't see the whole thing like there's been nights when we've had higher up right uh, more towards the lake when we've had the lake views that we you can see the whole thing really sure. really uh, really well um, we didn't even get to see the whole thing, but it was enough, and um, and we were happy to have it come by, you know, Most several definitely. nights, several mm-hmm. times during the trip. Uh, so the next day, um, we was the day that we closed on our new house. Yes. So we had to drive all the way back to the <laughs> east coast of Florida, um, and we went through a final walkthrough of the place. Had to go and deal with the bank thing, right. and then went and uh, went to the place where we ended up clo- closing right. and signing all the papers. <laughs> Our hands cramping from <laughs> initialing and signing and signing and initialing and everything. But we got our keys and we had our brand new home. That's right. And I think one of the things during that experience that just 
really blew our minds away was how patient Scott was during yeah. that process. Because, I mean, it's a long process. It's like a couple hour thing. Yes. And he sat, we were like in a little boardroom, and he sat there at the table and was magnificent. And I was, I was never so m- proud of him. The poor guy, we, we brought his Kindle along, and there's some games he right. likes to play on there to kill time or whatever. And the battery ran out like really, really, really early quickly, on. Yes. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, no. You know, I felt so badly for him. But he just sat there patiently. Yeah, mask on and right? everything. Yeah, and just, yeah. Uh, it was it was really really good. And that was yeah, yeah, we were very proud of him. So, yeah. and so we came back after getting our new house and rewarded everybody, including Scott, <laughs> with it with a trip to Magic Kingdom. That's right. <laughs> yes, um, not not for a long time, just for a, you know a couple hours out there. But we decided to go in and check it out, and we got to use the new updated DOS right uh, system. Yes, we had actually got him signed up. You can do it uh, if you want to do it in advance you have to do it i think it's 48 hours it might be 72 um so if you are planning to do it check out you, you if you go online they'll tell you and what you do is you actually schedule like a video visit um and then they activate your dos at that point we were able to actually activate it when we got his annual pass well yeah we at, we, we had to activate all our annual passes because right. we haven't we we'd since renewed that's true uh, to a brand new annual pass and so we needed to get them all updated. We right. did that. I didn't talk about that, but our first night there, we went to Epcot for a very short time. Mm-hmm. And a good portion of doing that was right. was getting all our passes activated right. and getting them set up with a DOS system. Yeah. And so that was really convenient. But right. And then how you can, you know, manage then your trip while you're there at the parks is really convenient being able to do that online. Yeah. Yeah. So basically it works with the, the DOS now. Um, it works like Genie Plus. Right. Um, so you have it and you're looking for time, return times for the different attractions mm-hmm. that you want to do. You're looking on your app, on the My Disney Experience app, or it's right there. Right. And so you, you find it there, you pick it, and you go in, and then uh, the, whoever is the participant in DOS right. um, has to scan in first, first. and then the, the other two, whoever's within the group as well right. that is on there, scans in afterwards. And we didn't go on a lot of attractions, right. but we did uh, well, his two favorites. <laughs> yes, multiple times. Yes. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh, and it's a small, small world. world. <laughs> yes, yeah, back and forth across <laughs> fantasy land. Um, and just had, a, you know, just had a little bit of fun out there on a uh, an afternoon as we were celebrating our new home. Right, yeah. I mean, it like I said, it was really convenient. How you described it was perfect in, in the process of it. Um, I was also really pleased that there were more things that were uh, that you could utilize for the that DOS pass than what was listed on their web page. There were a lot. I, I, I don't know if it was a lot, but there were attractions that weren't listed on the web page as being accessible through the DOS system, and they were actually online, you know, on your My Disney Experience app, able to access that way. I mean, the nice thing, too, that we're all linked, so I could pull up My Disney experience app and be able to manage us on the DOS system because we were linked with him. Yeah. And it was so much more convenient this way than it has been in the past. Not that, you know, DOS has always been good and right. great and we've, you know, appreciate we, it. Yeah. For yeah. Scott so much. Um, but it used to be every time you would go off an attraction, you'd have to go find some of the guest services areas right. throughout the park and locate mm-hmm. them. And then sometimes there's a line or whatever. But to find that return time right. for whatever the attraction was he wanted next, we didn't have to handle deal with any of that because right. we could just make the next one while we were in line. Just like with Genie Plus, you can go ahead and make the next one for whatever attraction right. you want to go to that is available for you right. uh, while you were there as soon as you'd scan in, in for that mm-hmm. attraction. Yeah. Right. So that was really, really... A really, really handy. Right. And we were lucky that, you know, uh, one, it was late, a little later in the day, especially for the attractions that Scott likes, that we were able to book some very quickly. Like like you said, we were in line and, and almost by the time the walk over, I think there was only one that we waited like five or 10 minutes mm-hmm. for. Um, but I know we, luckily for, we, we, it wasn't like we were trying to get on space. Right. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> we were lucky with the attractions that he wanted to go on. Um, and I, I, I think we were all a little worn out, uh, even though we didn't physically do a lot that day. It was a kind of a, ang- a stressful day and, and stressful in a good way, too, because we actually closed. Stressful the- and exciting. Yes. And, yeah. So, you know, but it was it was fun. I don't you know, I don't think 
the three of us have been at Magic Kingdom in a long time. The three of us together, it's been a long time. Yeah. I mean, we've been there, um, gosh, it's still, it's still been seven, eight months, and right. even we had been there, just the sure. two of us. Uh, but the three of us together... Um, we'd been to Disneyland a couple times, yeah. but uh, it's been a long time since we'd all been together. Yeah, I think it was Magic before Kingdom. the pandemic. It was definitely before the pandemic, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, yeah, that was good. It was fun. Yeah. Um, so, and then that was our last evening at the resort. Mm-hmm. We had, of course, the next morning we got up, packed, had breakfast, and then we went to Epcot for right. a, a little while yeah. to sample a little bit. Uh, one, we wanted to do the DVC Lounge right. because, you know, it was hot that day, yes. so it was nice to get in there and get a beverage and a seat and that yeah. was fun um we took some pictures uh, so a couple things by spaceship earth and uh, then we went to sample just a, a quick few things mm-hmm. from the flower and garden festival kitchens the, the you know the the, the booths that right, are around right. there so yeah. we, we did a l- little bit of snacking around yeah there. yeah you know got our our fill of some good food and was there something, a highlight that you enjoyed most? I mean, I had the, the what was it, the gumbo um, mm-hmm. that you purchased, which was really, and if you like a little spice, uh, it's definitely got a little spice mm-hmm. to it. So you, you, you're you going to want to like spice to get that. And I thought that was good. This was over at the, I don't remember what the kitchen was called, but it was at the American, American Adventures American, Pavilion. Right. Um, and you got that uh, boil, that yeah, seafood the boil. seafood boil. That was amazing. I could no first of all it was delicious and you know it had a nice blend of you know there were mussels and shrimp shrimp and uh what's a crawfish oh yeah and it had also it had like potatoes in there it had corn a, corn yeah corn on the cob it had um nice broth to it and for the price that I paid it was Fabulous. Yeah, what was it like eight fifty or something like that? Uh, yeah, I think, or maybe even maybe less. But yeah, yeah but yeah. A lot, it was a fair amount of food for yeah, eight dollars, yeah. a little over eight dollars, eight dollars, around eight dollars, right. somewhere around that. Right. It was a great price, and it was a, a fair amount of food there. You know, I mean, because you know, even your gumbo and stuff, and and I know that you picked out some pasta for Scott. That was a the pasta was a rip off. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was tasty. I had a little bite of it. It was tasty, but considering what the price was for yeah. those things and how much food you got over in Italy for the pasta, right. um, for the price of that, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't do it. Go get the other stuff. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, that 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 was highlight food for me was that dish. Um, and we also we picked up some desserts to bring back to the room. We, yeah, we stopped by the Encanto booth. Yes, because hashtag real men love Encanto. <laughs> Everybody loves Encanto. That's true. I know. They have um, some Tres Leches desserts. And um, so we picked up a couple of those. Scott had me cracking up where, because we had, we actually had packed like one of those containers that you could, you know, put food, storage food in it. And it fit two of them perfectly. And, and uh, it was funny, the whole whole time going back to the room yeah. scott kept pointing like and then pointing to his mouth like he wanted to I'm eat, gonna eat those yeah. you better not turn your back <laughs> i know he was hysterical but uh yeah we, we decided we were going to take those back and have those for dessert that evening yes and a good decision that was mm-hmm. yes uh, that's what we did we headed back to michelle's sister and brother-in-law's place again mm-hmm. out in india atlantic right there in the ocean and had a little dinner there and mm-hmm. yes that wonderful dessert which it was it was really good I, yes. I, I, um if you like coconut too i'm not the hugest coconut fan mm-hmm. but it wasn't overpowering right. on it um but the flavor was good it was moist um i i, I was a, i was a fan right it wasn't overly sweet it was just the right amount of sweetness you know because sometimes you can get tres leches and it's so so sweet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this was it. This was spectacular. Right. Uh, really good. Enjoyed mm-hmm. it. Uh, so then we spent Saturday. We kind of went back to, because you know, we hadn't actually, since we got the keys to our <laughs> house, actually visited our house. So we went back and visited our house on Saturday. and Did a Costco we, run. Did a Costco run, <laughs> especially to get gas because the price of gas. Uh, yes. Um, it, it did all that and just, just kind of enjoyed the day. And then Sunday was Michelle's day to return because she had yes. to get back to work. So. Yes. Unfortunately, she had to leave us. So it was just Scott and I for the last couple of days out there after she flew back. How was your flight back? My flight back actually was pretty good. You know, I, um, I did do a connection. It was a delay getting out of Orlando. 
Um, but I had a, a buffer in between where I was connecting through Charlotte. So it, it didn't, you know, wasn't nerve wracking or anything like that. And the flights went smoothly otherwise. And, uh, yeah, then I made it home. Fortunately, it arranged that your mom would pick me up. It's always nice to be able to just have somebody pick you up at the airport and, you know, I mean, obviously could do a car share ride or whatever, mm-hmm. but this was nice and got to spend, it was Mother's Day. So, you know, she and I got to spend a little bit of time, you know, together, um, you know, for Mother's Day, which was really special. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that you had to travel on Mother's Day, yes. but just kind of the way things worked out. So. Right, right. Um, we celebrated, Mother. I said we had the cabana and some other things mm-hmm. to celebrate her yep. Mother's Day, but, uh, you know. It was what it was, but right. I'm glad you got a little time with her for sure. Yeah. Since I didn't get to, I did, you know, wish her a happy Mother's Day. Right. I gave her a call and everything, um, but unfortunately I couldn't be there with her. So yeah. I'm glad that yeah. you were able to kind of represent the family. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it was also possible. really nice too, because it was the first Mother's Day that I didn't get to talk to my mother. So mm, it was yeah. it was nice to be able to, yeah. um, you know, I, I love my mother-in-law. She's amazing. And so it was great to be able to spend well, the good. time with her. I'm glad you had that yes. is a part of it. So, so Scott and I were just there on our own. We spent a couple of days. The first day, just kind of, we went to the new house and back and brought some things mm-hmm. over and checked it out. Not a lot of time there, but you know, just went and did that and enjoyed an evening together. And then we the next, we went for a walk and stuff. We did go for day. a walk uh, down by the coastline there, and that was fun. Yeah. Um, the next day, we had to meet with some people out there at the new house. Um, did that, and then it was time for me to bring Scott to his father. Mm-hmm. So off on the road we were again. <laughs> Unfortunately, no Bucky's on the road for this one, but we did have a good trip down to Miami. Nice. Um, everything went well. Um, leaving him with his father, I drove back up north. Uh, actually, we uh, in past road trips, I had brought a lot of stuff that we were mm-hmm. planning on bringing out to the new home right? Um, with me on those various yeah, road more, trips. More gen- gentle things that right. we didn't want to uh, have a mover truck, yeah. Yeah, take care of. We wanted to make sure they were like... Artwork and things yes, like that. Yes, that we were, we were observing how they were right. transported. So I picked a lot of those things up and brought those back, um, left them off in the house mm-hmm. on uh, the on the next day. Um, and uh, then I flew back. Right, and, uh, yay! My flight was fine. Um, flying, I, I, it's so funny <laughs> with me now. It's like I would, I'd rather spend four days driving cross country <laughs> than t- taking a you know a, a seven hour. What ends up being a seven eight hour day flying across. Yeah, country. I knew. I kind of have gotten that sense, especially since when we had the car situation happen and you were just still leaning towards driving out there. It's like okay. He's done with flying. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just, it's just not, I'm not a fan anymore of uh, it's, it's Greyhound in the sky. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, go down that road right. so much. I will fly. I'm happy to fly. I just don't, I, I miss what flying used to be and right. it just doesn't seem like, like yeah. that anymore. But anyway, I guess um, we each got to watch Spider-Man. We again. did get to see Spider-Man uh, no, no way, way home. home. Uh-huh. Again. We haven't seen it since we saw it in the theater. So right. that was nice. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, the flight was fine. It just, right. it's just not as what I, what I remember flying used to be yes. where we used to be like, oh yeah, we got a flight plan. Right. It's just yeah. not that anymore. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, it was a really good trip. So many things we accomplished. We got to do a little bit of everything, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit of relaxing, a little bit of Disney, right. you know, parks, you know, stayed in a lot of cool places, did some cool things and this wonderful new house that we have right. that we can't wait to, to get into here in the next uh, several weeks. Yeah, yeah. We were able to also uh, see the, was it was a dream or was it the fantasy we saw? I'm trying to remember now. We got to see both of them sail out. Oh, that's right. Because yeah. one was at the beginning of the yeah. trip, one was at the end. We, yeah, we missed watching a launch. We were awake and forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> What can you say? Yeah, I think if we were out there on the coast, we probably would have made more of an effort for it, but we were at Disney at that point. I don't so. know because we were closing up because of the turtle. Um, it's turtle season now, so you can't mm. have lights and yeah, stuff. So we, we would have we yeah, still we'll done see. it. We would have done it. We'd done it. Yeah, it's turtle season out there right now. It's one thing if you live out there on the coast, especially with some of these condos like that they have out there where we were staying and mm-hmm. Helen's 
uh, Michelle's sister, and Helen, right. and her uh, brother-in-law Tom's place. Uh, they're like, okay, from 9 p.m. to like, 6 a.m., <laughs> yeah. it's like you can't have any lights out there because we don't want to disrupt the turtles, right, which is, right. uh, we're all for that. Yes. But, you know, just some of those rules you got to follow right. for the next several months while you're out there. But yeah. Fun yeah, trip. I digress. Yeah, it was a great trip and a, an important trip, mm-hmm. a, an eventful trip, and, and we had a great time. And um Oh, I, I hope you don't mind us talking all about yeah. it because it was there was a lot involved with it. I hope you got some things out of this too that of things to consider if you're planning a trip, like whether it's with the cabanas or or other parts of this traveling. Right, and if you want to know where all the buckies are located <laughs> on the I-10 <laughs> as you go across the country, I can fill you in on that so you can stop by every one of them. There you go. Because I love them. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, that is our May 2022 Florida trip recap. Here we thought this episode was going to be short. Yeah. We always talk yeah. way too much. So yeah. let's quickly get to our Disney <laughs> stories of the week. And I do have a few of them for you this week. And I'm going to start with there are fantastic ways to celebrate with a little bit of soul coming to the Disneyland Resort. Yeah. This from the Disney Parks blog. They said this past February, Disney Parks kicked up Celebrate Soulfully, offering rich experiences that honor black heritage and culture. On Monday, Disney announced more ways to celebrate soulfully this summer. Throughout the month of June, the Disneyland Resort will invite you to continue to experience Celebrate Soulfully as they highlight Black Music Month with daily live entertainment plus specialty offerings including food, art, and more available throughout the resort. I know, that's awesome. Yeah, so here are some of the exciting things that are coming for Celebrate Soulfully this summer. Beginning on May 28th, so very soon, uh, Disneyland Park will welcome Tale of the Lion King to its new home at the Fantasyland Theater, where uh, this original story theater adaptation of Disney's Lion King will be staged in an all-new presentation. I know they had this plan. I think they started it just really briefly before the pandemic hit, had to shut it down. Uh, Now it's back going, and we can't wait to experience it. Right. Um, I mean, I don't know if we're going to get a chance to right away because so many things coming up yes. here. Um, but I'm um, very excited that it's going to be there. It's, if you're wondering where that theater is, if you've been to Disneyland, it's where they used to have uh, Mickey's Magical Map, right. that theater, right. out, kind right. of near kind Toontown of a, and Small World. Right. It's this large outdoor area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's great. Um, they're going to have the storytellers there talking about the kind of just retelling the story mm-hmm. of the Lion King. And uh, that's that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. And it, it is a really interesting stage. They do a lot with technology in terms of, you know, sharing that as part of the storytelling. For sure. So that's really cool. And they'll also have some uh, food that will kind of uh, represent the show at the Troubadour Tavern, which is really nearby mm-hmm. beginning on May 28th as well. Uh, Beginning on June 1st and running through July 4th, you'll get to enjoy Celebrate Soulfully at Disney California Adventure Park with daily live music celebrating black music genres from doo-wop to Motown. Mm-hmm. They say you can feel the nostalgia of Carthay Circle and enjoy Philly Phonics, an <laughs> acapella vocal group performing snazzy, jazzy tunes, as they say, from the 1920s through today. Five and Dime will be back. Nice. Well, all their stylishly sing the swing in 1920s mm-hmm. and 30s tunes with Brad and sass and in the evening you can head to the hollywood back lot to enjoy the summer vibes of the special block party featuring live musical acts seven nights a week so that's really cool yeah a lot of exciting fun and great music and um, it's good to see this the live music coming back. Mm-hmm. And also, even if you don't want to go, you know, pay for the tickets, get a reservation, mm-hmm. go into the parks, you can ex- still experience some of this because they share that the Soul of Jazz and American Adventure, a touring exhibit that illustrates the legacy and dynamic history of jazz, will be heading to the downtown Disney District from June first through July fourth. I believe that has been out at Epcot yeah, uh, so. recently. Well, now it's touring and it's going to be out 
at the downtown Disney district. So you can check it out. It's going to be in the building that used to be, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's the one that used to be the ESPN zone mm-hmm. there. It's across uh, from where they have the Star Wars trading post. Right. So if you know that area at all, uh, it's there and it's going to be free to go into. Nice. So you, you don't need to pay anything extra uh, to go in there. And also they're going to have some musical performances down through the downtown Disney district, including jazz, R&B, funk, Motown, doo-wop, all sorts of stuff. Nice. A DJ will be out there occasionally. So all sorts of ways to have a good time coming up this early summer at the Disneyland Resort. Yeah, very cool. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the happiest place on earth, there's a Disney California Adventure Park landmark that is getting set to return. Mm. This is good news from the OCregister.com. The red car trolley <laughs> that added an essential yes. burst of kinetic energy to Buena Vista Street and a nostalgic nod to the entry esplanade of the 1920s Los Angeles theme will be returning to Disney California Adventure Park after a three-year absence. Yeah. Yay. It's been so long since I we've know. seen the red yes. car trolley. The tracks are still there. I know. We haven't seen the trolley in so long. Well, I mean, there was they closed it for a while because of the construction mm-hmm. going on for um, Avengers Campus. So it had actually closed before the pandemic. It wasn't a result of the pandemic. Exactly. Um, but yeah, we've missed it for sure. It's just, it's it's one of those little quirky pleasures yeah exactly it, it, like you said it closed um because of the construction of avengers campus in april of 2019 uh but then when COVID struck they just never found the time to get it back going they right. couldn't get it back going but now uh, as they shared on their tiktok disney parks tiktok account it's coming back very soon so keep an eye out for the red car trolley once again at disney yes. california adventure park now if you have a trip to alani planned for this summer uh there's some good news for you because a guest favorite location will be returning soon with some extra added stuff involved with that this again from the disney parks blog they say we have big news to share from our ohana <laughs> <laughs> Auntie's Beach House at Alani, a Disney resort and spa, will reopen on May 25th, treating KK, which are kids, mm-hmm. ages 5 to 12, to fun and adventure, and for the first time, offering evening activities for the whole entire family Yay. to enjoy. Yeah. Uh, they say designed as a typical holle or house where kids might visit their auntie, mm-hmm. auntie, auntie, auntie. Auntie's in poker. Yeah. Auntie, Auntie is who you will meet in, right. Flo- in, in uh, <laughs> Hawaii. Money. Yes. Uh, the Rollicking Kids Club puts the focus on fun. Each of the six colorful rooms is dedicated to different activities from a movie room to a computer lab, arts, craft studio to a game room. Uh, parents can reserve a playtime in Auntie's Beach House between the hours of 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. daily for secured children's programming. During these hours, parents may select 1.5 hours of playtime for complimentary themed activities on Uncle's side of the house or two hours on Auntie's side of the house for premium activities. Reservations are required, so know that going in. Uh, the complimentary activities include the interactive games and arts and crafts based on the theme of the day. Premium activities include surfs up a surfing fishing and dancing party with disney <laughs> friends children will learn about the ocean catch a wave on carpet surfboards with max and get the somewhat wacky low down on fishing hawaii <laughs> waters with goofy he'll teach you the perfect cast yes yes maybe max could do that too right yeah, that's true and now the whole family can get in on the fun with after hours activities from 4 to 9 p.m. when Auntie's Beach House turns into an evening entertainment venue. Families can choose from an assortment of complimentary and premium activities where they can learn to play the ukulele, uh, get uh, together for a lesson in animation, or make lasting memories with photo opportunities in front of surfing scenes and other colorful backdrops. So lots of fun stuff going on out there, and you can start making reservations. Well, they actually can start making they started on may 11th you can start making okay. reservations um out there for auntie's beach house while you're out there so very nice fun stuff yeah, yeah. finally we'll wrap it up with a little bit of star wars celebration <laughs> which unfortunately we learned this week we will not uh, be attending no. oh i swear up until just a couple days ago i was all set we're ready to go right. we're going yeah. i was looking at panels i was ready to book when they had that originally we we're going to book where you right. can start possibly trying to get a reservation into a panel and then some news came 
this last week and it's like, oh, nope, we're not going to be able to make it. Yeah. That's okay. Right. Because there's a great way for us to experience it, even though we won't be there. And this is a great way for you if you can't make it out to Star Wars Celebration or even if you're there and you can't make it to some of these great panels. Right. So this from StarWars.com, they say Star Wars Celebration Live is coming to Star Wars Celebration Anaheim 2022 later this month. Whether you're, they say, whether you're joining us for the event or watching from home, Star Wars Celebration Live, presented by Geico, will be streaming panels, exclusive interviews, and other unforgettable segments direct from the show floor. Yeah, that's exciting. And I know they've done things like that in the past, and it really, it is very wonderful to be able to experience that, that at least to have that streaming ability to see some things going on Mm -hmm. so we get to see a lot of what's going on in in those panels and Mm -hmm. of course uh, they always have a lot of interviews on the floor and just a lot of fun you can check out if you have friends going you can check them out out there if you're out there you'll be able to see yourself possibly by the the stage Uh, and lots of fun so they say to tune into starwars.com or youtube.com slash star wars from may 26th through the 29th uh, for all the fun that's going to be going on out there so that's great news yeah. excited to check it out even though we won't be there and we'll be missing you all out there but we hope you all have a great time they're heading out to star wars celebration that's right yeah. so there was one other news thing is that the uh and we might have talked about this that it's coming soon but it's starting really soon now is the phantasmic dinner packages right. are coming back at Disneyland. So if you have trips planned, you know, at the end of the May or, you know, from then on, you can resume that wonderful experience of uh, having a dinner package and and great seating or great viewing areas for that show, which has been you know, reimagined several years ago and is amazing. And here's a quick tip before our tips. If you, and I'm assuming they're going to have it back at Riverbell Terrace because that's mm-hmm. where they've had a lot of them before. If you book it at the right time for Riverbell Terrace, if you get lucky, you can get out there. They have tables and chairs out there where you'll be eating dinner and Fantasmic will go on so you can see the right. whole thing from your seats right there. Yeah, I think in the past, and I don't know if they're going to do it, still do it again now, you could actually reserve it specifically for that time. Um, they, I think they do charge a little bit more for that particular um, package if you do that. But yeah, it's like you said, it's great to be sitting right, you know, having a, your your food and, and sitting at a table and chairs to watch. Fantastic. But either way, you'll get a, a great spot. If you do any of the dining packages right. throughout the day, there's a great spot to check out the show. You will have to sit on the concrete uh, mm-hmm. out there, but uh, it is a great spot to see it. And it is the best version of Fantastic, yes. in our opinion, yeah. uh, the Disneyland version. So mm-hmm. so glad it's returning and glad they're going to have the dining packages yeah. to go along with it. So. so that's it for the Disney stories of the week. However, we never leave you without giving you some sort of tip that might help you on your next vacation. And when we do this, well, we always start with Michelle. One, because she's awesome, fantastic. (laughs) She is just so wonderful. She does the best research. (laughs) You know she has the best lists, but she definitely has the very best tips. So let's get to it. Here is Michelle's tip of the week. Oh, you're so sweet. Mine's actually very uh, brief and it's in relationship to now it's starting to get, it's starting to get warm even here in Southern Cal. Are you still eating my hydrate? No, but I'm going to build off of that. But I I will say hydrating is still part of the thing to do. But uh, in preparation for a trip out to the park, you know, um, one of the things we've done that that seems to really help, too, is uh, the night before freeze or at least partially freeze a water bottle. And then um, you can wrap it with one of those like cooling cloths to have in your backpack or whatever. And then it's especially good, I think, too, if you have little ones who who become more sensitive to the to the heat and everything is to be able to then as the day goes on, once it starts getting really hot, use that cooling cloth that is now cold and, you know, and picked up some of the dampness from the, you know, the bottle sweating and use that to cool down. Plus, you have now really cold water to drink as well. Yeah. No, that's a great point. Um, love the, the process of freezing it. And if you have other things that you want to kind of keep cold in your right. backpack as well, it works for that. You know, maybe some fresh fruit, some other kind of snacks right. that you kind of want, maybe some sandwiches. You yeah. know, you don't want to have to go and buy sure. food all the time when you're in the parks. Right. Uh, and that'll help keep that cold as well. So right. uh, ready to yes. go. So yes. great tip. Michelle's wow, tip. Thank you. Always the best <laughs> tip. Uh, my tip this week uh, is going to be just something 
really brief on uh, Genie Plus, and that Genie Plus, if you have a large group of people. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing you want to know, if you have Genie Plus, you know, for a large group of people, that's great. You can go ahead and book everybody right. on the attractions as long as they've all paid for it. Everybody has to have, have it attached mm-hmm. to their account. They all need to be signed in with a, a, an account on My Disney Experience, and you all have to have linked accounts. Right. You can go on and whatever attraction you want, you know, you know, as large as your group, I think it goes up to 12 people is the max mm-hmm. that they all allow to do that on there. Um, you can go ahead and book, you know, the attractions that are available for you for the entire group. Right. But let's say you have part of your group. Let's just say we have a group of eight, maybe a couple different families together. And part of the group wants to go on Space Mountain. Part of the group doesn't really like the roller coaster thing and doesn't really want to go right. on Space Mountain. So they want to do something like Winnie the Pooh. Right. Well, the good news is that even with that, you can still book separately, even if you're booking some attractions together on Genie Plus, you can also book separately nice. on Genie Plus. All you need to do is, like I said, have everybody, one, pay for Genie Plus mm-hmm. and have everybody have their own account signed in on the My Disney Experience app. Then when you book you, you know, your Lightning Lane return time, you can go on there, you click it, and you just select who you want on each attraction. Nice. And and so you'll you'll have your group of one, let's just say one group of four going on Space Mountain. Meanwhile, the other person will go on and manage the other group of four and say they want to go on Winnie the Pooh or whatever it may be. Now, the one big important thing involved with this is that if there are kids involved, because your kids aren't usually going to be managing their own accounts right. on the mind, you need to make sure that one of the people that are managing the accounts that is going to the separate attraction, be able to manage the children's accounts as mm, well, be right. on board to be able to manage those accounts. So Good point. Um, it's a little confusing, but you know, if you go on there and try it, it just, just know going in right. that it's you can doable. get on there. You can do it. You don't all need to go to the same attraction right. and book it at the same time you can go your different ways if you want to throughout the day right. and still use genie plus to get that lightning lane access nice so good tip honey thank wow. you sweetheart Very good. So, that's it for this week next week well we're doing another deep dive into one of our favorite disney characters yes yes and it's for a certain time frame too because it's his birthday mm, well we now know it's a him <laughs> So uh, in the past, we've done Mickey and Minnie, we've done Donald Duck, we've done Pluto, we've done Chip and Dale. There's a character that we've really been wanting to get to for a long time because it's really one of our favorites. We know it's got to be one of your favorites. We've already mentioned him in the show. And yes, a special day is coming up for him. That is the good old favorite dog. Is he a dog? Yes, is he, he is a dog. Is he a dog? He I'm never dog. sure. But Pluto's a dog. <laughs> Whatever he is, he's Goofy. We love Goofy. We're yes. talking all about Goofy we next week. We are talking about Goofy. Goofy's birthday actually is May 25th. Uh, so we're going to be celebrating him with a deep dive. Nice. And uh, Michelle, you know, as we mentioned, she always does the best research. So, <laughs> you know, she'll have some fantastic facts. So you always learn a bunch of stuff and learning all about Goofy next week. One of our favorite characters of all time, possibly my favorite classic character. Sorry, Mickey. Sorry, Donald. Right. I love me some Goofy. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Best ca- best character, best uh, laugh, and just a good, fun guy. Yeah. 90 years old. So that'll be fun to talk about. We may also, um, if we, assuming we are making that trip to Disneyland tomorrow, <laughs> uh, we may re- give you a quick recap of yeah. that adventure as well. So as for this week, we appreciate that you joined us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. Have the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there... Join in with those of the... Oh, those old... <laughs> Yes. Can we cut that out? No. <laughs> Please. Join those other wonderful folks who have signed up for the newsletter. <laughs> Please sign up for the newsletter. It's just another way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures podcast world. And, you know, I, I do mess up with the writing so much, you know, every once in a while. But I also mess up the speaking here on the show. And even Michelle messes up the speaking from time yes. to time, but just much less than me. But either way, the newsletter is just a great way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures 
Adventures podcast world. Exactly. So another great way is to follow us on social media. We're on Twitter at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. If you are on Facebook, come on over and join us for some good, positive Disney energy fun at our Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. And if you're already part of that group, please tell some friends about it. It does continue to grow and it's really impressive and I love that. Yeah, and keep sharing all the fun stuff that you're doing out yes. there or just, you know, if you, again, if you don't feel like you want to be a sharer and just want to enjoy what other people are sharing, right. that's fine as Celebrate well. Celebrate together. We just want you all to be part of that fun group. Also, we are on YouTube. If you want to find us there, just do a quick search for Hyperion Adventures Podcast. Hit subscribe and you'll know whenever we have a new video. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. And the other thing that we really love to ask you is to please tell a friend about this podcast. Yeah. Again, just like uh, telling friends to join the Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group, even better telling people about this podcast. It's just uh, uh, the best way for people to find out that we exist out there right. and that it's something that you think that they might enjoy and so they can give us a try. Another great way is by giving us a review. You can go to you know Apple Podcasts or there's some other places you can go to as well. Um, we'd appreciate a five-star review, but whatever you feel is worthy, we're not going to judge you by it. And, and we love hearing feedback. It really right. helps us with knowing what people really like about the show and what to focus on. Right. Plus, uh, there's you know, these algorithms and things that I don't understand, which is just like most things. <laughs> uh, but they help people find if they're looking for a Disney pos- podcast, especially right. a positive Disney podcast like we like to be, um, that they might enjoy. Um, the more reviews we get, the more five-star reviews we get, the more it gets recommended to people when they are doing searches on Apple Podcasts exactly. and so forth. So that's it. Thank you for listening to another... Uh, I'm going to keep that in, too, because it's fair. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another Hyperion Adventures podcast, another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. Boy, we need to check out. Yes. We look forward to sharing some time with you again next week. Until that time, I'm Tom. I'm Michelle. And we hope that you have a magical week. <laughs>